There's a reason why Jester is in figure drawing. It's because it is a very core portion. So let's talk about that. Jester applied to figures. Even though Jester drawing and figure drawing are technically separate, Jester is what makes a figure feel loose and natural. Jester is within figure drawing. It's not just a separate thing. It's not just a whole other technique that everybody gets to use just because they can. Jester is what makes a figure feel loose and natural. It's why when you see figure drawing, they feel natural. They feel realistic. They feel like they have waiting to them, right? And usually you want that sort of waiting. If you don't have gesture and you just have structure, everything will feel very, very robotic. And you don't want that. You want to make sure that everything still feels like natural. So that's when gesture comes in and gesture creates that movement. It helps keep your movement alive. Right? Gesture is in all of your figures. When your gesture is put together with figures, it'll create loose and natural looking poses. Figure drawing is a combination of form and gesture. So we need both both within all of our figures in order to create a nice and natural looking piece. So you can think of your gesture as the movement. You can think of your form as the structure. Together, it creates figure drawings. What gesture does adds your movement and your action, your form adds proportion and structure. All right, so you want both of those to be within all of your figure drawings. Let's take a look at this piece. This piece has a lot of form. There's a lot of structure. It's a very realistic painting. Actually, technically, Norman Ruggle was an idealistic painter. He painted a lot of stuff that was like the quote unquote ideal version of like America and that sort of deal. So they're not like 100% realistic because people don't really look like this. Not as often anymore. Let's analyze what we're looking at right now. Let's take a look at our gesture first. What do we see here? So we see this head. So let's say we've got the head here, right? We can analyze, find the cranium. So we've got the shape of our head in there, built in nice and strong. But now we want to find our gesture. We want to find our line of action. So this line of action, again, where our line of action starts is kind of at the back of the head or where the spine starts. And then to where the most weight is being applied, which is right here at the tip of her foot. So if we took this arch of the back here, comes forward toward the pelvis and then down to the tip of this toe. That's our line of action, a nice smooth S curve that goes throughout the entire pose. Nice and smooth, nice and elongated, but right? it moves throughout the entire figure that we are looking at. Let's find this other movement though. So kind of like what I just mentioned, we want to find somewhat approximately where the rib cage is, right? So right here-ish. Remember this line kind of follows the spine, so it makes sense for it to be kind of in the back here. He's moving down, we can kind of see the pelvis based on this leg, probably ends off here based on the measurement of the calf to this leg, right? The measurements should be equal, so we can estimate that the pelvis is kind of right here-ish. And we can use just another line, triangle for the foot. There's two arms. Obviously, there's one right here, one right here. We want to see where the shoulder is being connected. We can obviously see it, but how do we know that that's there? So right here in the center, this is where our collarbone would be. Our collarbone would be directly across here, and our shoulders so happen to be connected directly to the collarbone. We can bring this down, a little circle for the hand, estimate where the shoulder is. And we can't see this arm, but we can see this hand. If we have the hand here, we know where the wrist is. We draw that perpendicular line, we should be able to figure out where that other arm goes. So our pose is kind of like this. Obviously, this gesture isn't perfect. The gesture is not meant to be perfect, but it gives us an idea of how the body moves. Right now, it looks kind of like a funky little skeleton. So this is our gesture. But gesture isn't the only thing that is in a figure drawing. There's form as well. So let's figure out where our form is now. Now, our forms are our 3D shapes that make up the entire body. So once again, we can take the head. The head has not changed. So from this head drawing, we can see the neck. The neck can be made up of a cylinder. So we can add in that cylinder there. All right, we talked about the rib cage already. So we already have our rib cage in there. From there, we can create a form for our ribs. Some people like to use cubes. You can use this kind of funky rib cage shape. And based on the bend of the body, ignoring the clothes for a moment, where we know where our pelvis should be, we can draw in another section for kind of the stomach or the midsection. You could even use an oval if you so choose. Again, I personally like using like a bent macaroni piece almost. And then we have to find that underwear shape for the pelvis. So again, based on the front of the body, that we can guess that the front of our underwear shape is going to be like that. So then we can make room for our limbs. Now, our limbs generally can be drawn like cylinders. If you'd like to support the channel and the creation of free arts education, become a member on Patreon. Then we can find that structure of each limb. Limbs, again, generally drawn as cylinders. Is that always the case? Not necessarily. And the arms, once again, once we reach our arms, we're gonna need to find that collarbone, which we have already found with the gesture. So then we know where to put our shoulders. And you can draw this arm coming down this way. There's one cylinder for that portion, the bicep. And then we can draw our forearm coming down this way. And then this arm is actually hidden by the entire body. So we don't really need to draw it in. And we can just have the hand right here. Estimate that the rest of the hand is like this. And that's our form. 
and our forms are the structure structure that builds up the entire body combined the two of those create a wonderful little piece so we need to learn to apply both our gesture and our form to any kind of pose in order to make it feel lifelike and this is what observational illustration is all about is learning to combine our gesture and our form to create figure drawing Join a virtual class to learn live from our professional artists. Get creative assignments, individual guidance, and real-time feedback on your artwork. Start today and level up your practice. If you learn something new, like and share this with a fellow art nerd. If you love receiving quality and free arts education, subscribe. Here's a couple other videos you can check out next.